Well, good evening to those of you that are joining us online. As you can hear, there's quite a few people here in the room already. So uh, uh, <laughs> come and join with us if you can. It'd be great to have have you here. <laughs> and uh, we've got a big pile of cakes in front of us as well. Good to see you, Stephen. So, uh, yeah. Tonight we're going to be uh, looking at, at Luke chapter 9 in a minute or two. Before we do that, uh, a few reminders that the, there is the opportunity to meet uh, for coffee in Costa Coffee in Watergate Street in Chester for the ladies, uh, for men as, as well, if they would work if to, somebody want somebody wants to come turn up and share something. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's tomorrow at 10.30. Is that right? 11. Eleven, ten thirty, eleven. Whenever, <laughs> however long you can make a cup of coffee last. <laughs> and then, um, where where are we? Back to Sunday then. In that case, and uh, you can join us at eleven o'clock on Sunday here, and uh, watch us live if you can't make it here. Um, and then, um, yeah. Let's pray. Let's let's give this time to the Lord. And, uh, and see what happens tonight. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We give you uh, all the glory tonight. Yes, Lord. Mm. Your name is above every name. Lord, your name is a name of power, of majesty, of mm. might. Your name is a, a, a name of justice and truth. Your name is a name of love and mercy mm. and grace, compassion, long-suffering and patience, Lord. Your name is a name of peace yes. and fulfillment and satisfaction, Lord. And we thank you for every blessing that you've given us, everything that you've done in our lives mm. through the finished work, through your power, through yes. your might. Uh, fill us with your life tonight, we pray. And just anoint with your Holy Spirit. Uh, we need you. We crave you. Uh, we here for you tonight just do your precious work tonight we pray Amen. however you decide to be with those that can't be out tonight for whatever reason those that are not well those that are maybe somewhere else uh, knit hearts together draw people as well Lord, we pray uh, and draw some of the people who've been out in recent times Lord, we pray and encourage each one Lord. now we ask in jesus name amen, amen. amen. Okay, let's look at uh, Luke 9. We're going to read from uh, verse 57. Can we get the page read off? Just to <laughs> make some people scroll a long mm, way. I hope I've got the right one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I told him I'd be 8, then 9, then 8 again. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, verse 57 of um, Luke 9 says, And it came to pass yeah, <laughs> that as they went... In the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air, air have nests, mm -hmm. but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. And he, he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Mm. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hands to the plough, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Mm. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words tonight. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness in all of your ways, Lord. Thank you for words of power that speak into our lives. Touch hearts tonight, Lord, we pray. And Lord, we we are nothing, we have we have no words of our own. 
we have no message but lord we rely on your spirit of truth your spirit of life your spirit to guide your spirit to anoint to bring life into your word now by the holy spirit of truth in the name of our lord jesus christ we ask it amen amen yes mary was looking across at me then (laughs) she quoted that last verse as we came through the door tonight (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's like I, shall, I, shall, I was going to say shall I say something I thought no I'll let her let her get the surprise later <laughs> but there we go yes wow yeah <laughs> it's interesting this passage in my bible has a little foot, uh, like a heading over it you know sometimes you do that you get that in, in bibles and the, the heading is the cost of disciples Mm. Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take to think of that? <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not very keen on that, to be honest. No, <laughs> because uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, do we go? Do we owe God anything? Do we give God something? Are we paying something for God? It's like, you know, here you are, God. I'm going to pay this for you. You know, no, actually, no, actually, it, really. it's like everything we have, everything we are. Yeah is from him Mm -hmm. yeah and actually this this uh, is yeah maybe it's a challenge of discipleship Mm. but maybe it's the honor of discipleship Mm. maybe it's the blessing of discipleship Mm. maybe it's the encouragement of discipleship yeah sometimes there are sacrifices that are made Mm -hmm. sometimes maybe we miss out every one of us who are here tonight even missing out on uh probably seen the one show and coronation street <laughs> and all of oh, these no. things, <laughs> all of these Shop. things that are sort of wonderful british tv mm-hmm. but uh, it's like no it, but the point is it's like no but sometimes sometimes maybe we do we do lay down our lives and we we think okay uh, that's something i could have done um but you know what? The blessings far outweigh. Uh, actually, somebody once said, you know, it's happened years ago. We had a, a conference from our ministry years ago in um, uh, Malmö in Sweden. Oh, wow. That's going back. Yes. Were you guys there? Really? No. No, we weren't. No, we yes, weren't. Yes, no. no, we weren't in Malmö. No. We were in Stockholm. We're in Stockholm. Stockholm. Okay, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, I... I no, I, I went to it, and I was living in Prague at the time. Ah. <laughs> but uh, guess what? Actually, that weekend, um, the Queen was coming to Prague, and you know, like for British citizens who were living in the city at the time, uh, there was this uh, this invitation to go to the embassy, and the Queen would be at the embassy, and uh, you know, it's like. go to that you know but then there was the choice of oh you know um, meet the queen or go to Malmo yeah go to Malmo <laughs> go to the church conference or actually meet the queen and oh. it's like in the end like, no, I'll just go to Malmo to meet the queen and it was it was a great conference thinking about mm. it I remember it still today mm. uh, certain things that happened though it was a great time great time of fellowship great time of the body of Christ in in, in Prague and uh, I think there was, I think Pastor um, Andy Velitis okay. came on the bus with us, and there were a few other people who came on the bus with us who were maybe living in Budapest at the time. And I came down to Prague and got the bus with us to, to go across to, to Malmo. But, but anyway, uh, it was good. But then I remember, like, uh, Pastor John Boy said afterwards, you know, you know Alistair, he gave up the opportunity to meet the Queen <laughs> <laughs> to, to go to a conference. I thought, well, you know, I, I mean, I probably wouldn't have met the Queen anyway. No. Yeah. <laughs> probably in one of these just boring receptions where there's hardly any food and yeah, that's just, where yeah. everybody just stands around and does nothing. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's like, no, the point is we put God first. And that's the thing, isn't it? And also, you know, like, we're living in the finished work of 
Jesus Christ. So anything that happens, anything that we do, is it's down to God anyway. Mm, absolutely. He's doing it all here. And, uh, and it's funny, isn't it, how people think. Uh, and I think Jesus does that to challenge some of these people. Because, you know, here's this guy. And it, is he a disciple, first guy? Do we know who he is? No. 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 Is he mentioned again? No. 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 Does he actually go with Jesus? No. no. We don't know. No. Maybe, no. probably not. No. But what happens? Jesus, he's walking down the street, and this guy comes along with a big gush of emotion. And says, Jesus, I'll go with you wherever you go. Because <laughs> that's me. I am devoted. Mm. And, and guess what? Jesus calls his bluff straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's and right. it's like, okay, fine. You know, the flo- foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man doesn't have anywhere. Are you prepared for that? Is that... Is that is that what you want? And it, and it's interesting, actually, isn't it? You know, uh, and that's the end of the story. From that point of view, mm. we don't we don't hear anything more. Mm. And it's like, yeah, but actually, Jesus does call his bluff there. It's like, oh, you know, I'm a, I have this big grand gesture, but it's like, no, that's not the point, is it? Mm. Yeah, it's not. It's a, it's actually you know the unseen things. The little things. How many people didn't say? I mean, like, think about it. Uh, Nathaniel, when he hears about Jesus, says, oh, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Mm-hmm. And yet Nathaniel becomes one of the disciples. Mm-hmm. And he's with him at right, right, right until the end. I mean, I think he's mentioned in, is it John uh, 21 as one of the ones that goes back fishing. And, but, you know, he's, he's there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, now it starts off with, a, you know, oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm going to go. But he's the one that stays. Yeah. And so often you see that in mm-hmm. the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. The people who don't make a big fuss about it are the ones who... who uh, I was thinking about that, actually, mm. you know, over the years, looking back at some of the, the trips that I've been in, the people who you never thought would stay around were the people who stayed around. Mm-hmm. The people who you think are going to stay around... Yeah. Oh, they all do great. All oh, they are doing great in the future. Yeah. Actually, often they're not. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, you know, we we don't try and second guess these things. But it's like it's interesting. Foxes have holes. Who are the foxes? Remember, Jesus calls Herod a fox. <laughs> a bit later, I'll tell yeah. that fox, Herod, <laughs> that the. Uh, the, the 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 blind see and the lame walk and you know the gos- the poor the poor of the, the gospel preached unto them. In other words, yeah, okay. Who are the foxes? Uh, foxes. Remember Song of Solomon, uh, two fifteen. The little foxes that yeah, spoil, spoil the, the grapes, vine, yeah. isn't it? Spoil the vine. Yeah. Spoil the vine. Yeah. It's like uh, take take. Take us the fox, foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our, our vines have tender grapes. And it's like, mm, okay. Okay, so who are the foxes? Foxes actually are scavengers. Yeah. They just go with what they can get, steal. Uh, they're quite sly. Uh, they slide in there. They're opportunists, aren't they? Really? You know, it's like oh, a fox will, will, will take a chicken if it's if it gets the chance to. That's it. Okay. Um, remember Samson? Mm-hmm. He uses the the foxes, ties their tails together, and sets firebrands between them and uses them to destroy the the Philistines' corn. You know, and it's mm-hmm. like I don't know, the foxes they they they're spoilers of things. Remember the Nehemiah, the war, <laughs> and it's like, oh, the fox. Oh, yeah. I, I, if a fox goes up on that wall, it'll tumble down. You know, it was a, it was a mocking thing. Mm. You know, it's like, oh, um, foxes, are, they'll knock it over. And foxes, well known for knocking over bins in the middle of the night, <laughs> making a mess, <laughs> yeah. getting into the farmer's chicken coop, yes. and wreaking havoc. It's like. 
So there you go. Foxes, they're not a good testimony. But even they have a hole to go to. Yeah. Mm. Even mm. the foxes, oh, yeah. Yeah. they've got somewhere to go. Yeah. They've got somewhere the to hide away. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you know, you know, they've got somewhere. And maybe Jesus is sort of suggesting that this guy is like is a bit of an opportunist. I just happen to see Jesus, and mm. I have this big gush of emotion. I, you know, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a chicken dinner tonight. <laughs> I'm going to have, you know, like the fox. You know, I'm going to have a whole chicken tonight. Uh, ah, yeah, I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to be. I, me and Jesus are going to be like that. You know, like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, and it's like you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. Wherever you go, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be with you. Yeah. And it, you know, and it's like no. And, it, and Jesus is saying no. You're just, you're just an opportunity like fox, really, aren't you? You're just taking that that thing, wow. sly. And it's like no, that's not it. That's not the thing. Birds of the air. What do we know about the birds of the air? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Often associated with. Uh, demonic causes, aren't they? Yeah, the yeah. prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2 2. And it's like, yeah, what do the birds do? Uh, Ecclesiastes 10 20, remember that one as well about the uh, the the birds where they, they go and they they tell the secret. Let's see if I can find that actually. I haven't got that one marked. But yeah, what does it say? Curse not the king in thy thoughts, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber, for the bird of the air shall carry thy voice, yeah. and that which hath wings shall tell it, t shall tell the matter. And it's like, yeah, uh, the birds of the air, like, yeah, twitter away, <laughs> tweeting, <laughs> tweeting online. <laughs> and, uh, and it's like you know they they, they they all the secrets come out and it's like oh yeah mm -hmm. oh you never guess what and uh, <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. they have a homing homing device in them to find their way and it's like no uh, again but even the birds they have their they have they have a place uh, but you're talking about the son of man here. Are you prepared to go with Jesus? Not just the, the clicky, tweety birds that gossip around and cause trouble and give away secrets. Um, no. Um, this is the Son of Man here. This is Jesus you're talking about. Mm. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. But Jesus, you're supposed to be making disciples, encouraging people. Come on, you know, get people to come out. Don't drive them away. Don't give them reasons not to come. Don't get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, that's, that's what Jesus did. Um, so if I've, if I've offended you and you don't come back to church, I'm doing the same as Jesus, didn't I? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking now. Sorry. Yeah, of course you are. If you are offended, sorry. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> that's uh, that's not the way, uh, but no. But then there's this other guy here, and it says, you know, Jesus said, uh, well, it says, uh, Jesus says, follow me, and he says, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And then Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go thou. And preach the kingdom of God. Mm. Now, okay. <laughs> huh. Oh dear, dear Jesus, that's not that's not very compassionate. You know, oh, how can you say that to somebody? You were supposed to be comforting those that mourn, and it's like, well, how do you, how, you know, there's this man who's lost his father. You're not even going to let him go. There's Jesus, you're very heartless. No, that's not the point here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there, are, there are various questions we can ask here. First of all, is he dead yet? Is he dead yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first question. Because it's like, you know, is it, has your father actually died? Or is it like, oh, mm. oh my father, I wouldn't get out, you know, that they haven't got long. Oh, I can't, you know, I can't do this. 
I bet it. I, <laughs> I know somebody years ago who a friend of mine who was was going to marry someone. Dad's very sick, and my mum will be alone. You know. And guess what? They never got married in the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very sad story. Mm-hmm. Very sad story, really. But it's like you know, we can put things off, and uh, but they're, but they're genuine concerns and they're real issues, and it's like, mm-hmm. and it's compassion and it's being a good, it's being a good child to look are you going to honor your father on your mother that's mm, what the that's law what says mm. and it's like well you know you should be doing this and and it's like ha ah, but what does jesus say yeah yep wow yeah you know what it is good to be compassionate it is good all of these things are good but if the Lord Jesus Christ says something different. Who do we obey? Mm-hmm. If Jesus tells us to do something that actually goes against our natural way of mm. thinking, oh, everybody does that. Yeah, that's natural. It's only natural to look after your 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 family and and care for your family and <clears throat> and 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 comfort those that are mourning. That's the way. That's the right thing that should do. Mm. Maybe you're the the son who's got the inheritance. Maybe you've then got to till the land, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, okay, all right. Also, remember this: customs for mourning. What were they? Now, in the Middle East, often people are bore, are buried the same day that they die. Mm. You see that with Ananias and Sapphira that. Ananias has, has been buried before Sapphira is in, has even got home. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> they bury the, the they bury the dead very quickly um, in in the hot countries mm-hmm. uh, because of the decay, because of the chance of disease spreading. So mm-hmm. yeah, okay. So there's not very much, but the season of mourning could be a week, could mm-hmm. be several days, could be a month. Mm-hmm. 30 days. In fact, if you look at the, the book of, of, uh, of uh, Genesis, uh, chapter 50, verse 3, when Jacob died, they observed 70 days of mourning for the whole of Egypt. Because obviously Joseph was his son and he was like the, the prime minister of the whole nation of Egypt. Oh, we're going to mourn for 70 days. <laughs> Three score and 10 days it says so you know what what's the right time for morning well well it, it could be it could be this time it could be that time it could be a bit longer when i'm ready yeah. jesus when when i when i feel ready jesus i can't, I can't even feel <laughs> when i when i've got over this and it's like you know i remember uh Charlotte told the story about how somebody came to him in one church that he visited and they said that they, oh, uh, this uh, person in their family had died. And it's like, oh, really, I'm sorry to hear that. Blah, 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 blah. And it was like years ago. It was like, yeah, yeah, it was like years ago. And it's like, what? <laughs> You're still, <laughs> still mourning? <laughs> you know, I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes we do find yeah. it difficult to get over yeah. the death of someone. Yeah. But it's like, no, that's not the focus. And the danger is it can swallow up, and we see this sometimes, mm-hmm. that people let that grief swallow them. And it's like, no, and Jesus says, let the, be- let the dead bury the dead. And you think, well, how? What does that mean? <laughs> how, how, how can dead people bury dead people? But there is an element whereby, actually, if we are alive for Christ, and we have the life of Christ in us, and we have a godly calling, then actually we have a purpose that goes beyond. And actually maybe there are people who are spiritually dead or spiritually unawake who will just go through the motions and all well, oh, this is on. No, we'll just sort this out. We can do all of this and we'll, what about the details? And, you know, what about hymns? And have you chosen a coffin? And it's like, 
okay, fine, you know, they're all necessary things. But actually, maybe there's another calling here. And Jesus challenges and says, you know, uh, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Because actually, yes, there's an element whereby, you know, yes, the kingdom of God needs to be preached. And then there are those that are, that are still alive. That we can influence. You know, once someone is dead, we can't share the gospel with them. Once someone is dead, that's it, they've gone, they've had their choice, they've had their life. Once someone is dead, there's not much more we can do for them. You know, that's it, we can bury them, that's it, really. But after that, there's like, there's nothing more we can do. But actually, for the living, who need to hear the gospel of salvation, who need to hear about the life of Christ, the forgiveness of sins. Resurrection life. That's the point, isn't it? It's like we have the hope of resurrection life in us. We have the life of Christ in us. We have a godly calling. We have a, the, the challenge to go out there and do something for the living today. And that's much greater in one sense. And it's like, yeah, well, oh, you know, well, yeah. Uh, be, yes, be compassionate for people if someone has lost someone. We do pray for those that have, lo have lost someone. Mm -hmm. We do support them. We do comfort them. That's fine. But we discern what the Spirit of God is saying. Mm. Because when Jesus says, well, leave this and go and do something else. Leave the natural. Yeah. The family is there. Yes, it's only natural that you would want to do that. But actually, I've got another purpose and another kingdom and a higher calling. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Great. Go for it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Go and preach. And then the third one, it's like, you know... Um, Lord, I will follow thee, but first let me go and bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Okay. okay. Uh, again, that sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Go and say goodbye to my family first. That's like, oh. Ah, yeah. Oh. But again... There's a, a fine line between compassion and sentimentality. Mm. You know, what is a goodbye? See you then. Okay, mm -hmm. bye. That's it. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or is it, you know, oh, we've had so much together. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to miss you so much. Oh, oh come here, give me a hug. <laughs> and it's like, you know, there's the, there's the, you know, sometimes a goodbye can be very long and drawn mm, out. Yes. Actually, when I was first in this ministry, I used to quite surprise me because you'd go to a conference and you'd have an amazing experience with people that you'd only just met or, you know, or you didn't see very often. But the point is, everyone used to just go back to their own. Um, Thanks places when yeah. at the end of the conference you know and you just people just left when they left when the old oh, my flight's gone you know and at, at first i used to think you know it's like oh those people didn't come and say goodbye to me yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a bit yeah. strange isn't it but now i perfectly understand it because yeah. you know you go you go on to the next thing yeah. and actually the goodbye is not the is not the important thing you know it's like, oh my fingers drape for the hour. <laughs> The train is leaving and I have my hand wrapped <laughs> out and it's like, oh, and it's all tears. and you know, No, but that's not the point, is it? No. No. <laughs> it's like, you know, well, and again, how long is this going to take? You know, I'm going to go back to, to everyone who feels at home in my house. Well, you know, there's my mom and there's my, my dad and then there's my 15 brothers and then there's my auntie. 
Polly, and then there's the, uh, <laughs> my, my uncle and uh, my cousins, and then Second there's the cat, Second and cousin. then there's the and then there's the horse, and then there's the big star, <laughs> and it's like you know, and, it, and it's like you know, we have to go through, and then there's everybody who I was at school with, and then there's everybody who I, and it, before long, you know, it can be this massive thing of sentimentality, and uh, and guess what, everyone that we do that with there's a chance that you won't go. Yeah. Mm, no partner. Oh, my, my, my childhood sweetheart. Stay with me. <laughs> we were meant to be together. Okay, <laughs> Je- okay, Jesus, I've changed my mind. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jesus, I've changed my mind, you know, it's like, oh, but you're my best mate. I've got to, you know, think of all the things we're going to get up to together. Oh, yeah, yeah actually, Jesus, you know. You know, I have time to think about this, you know. <laughs> oh, but you're going to leave your poor mother and I'm going to be all alone and I'll miss you every day. <laughs> and think of my home cooking. Okay, you know. But the thing is, everyone, oh, everyone, there's a, there's, a, there's a link there. There's a temptation, isn't there? And it's, and it's like, well, you're not going to go if you're not careful. That's the thing. And I realised the other day when I was reading it that actually this this passage is referring back to a, a story in the Old Testament. Mm. Because actually if you go back to uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 mm. verse 19 of chapter 19 Yeah. It says, So he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was ploughing with a twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen. And ran after Elisha and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew it and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people that they did eat and he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Mm. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, the call of, of Elisha the prophet. Uh, what's happening here? Okay. Oh, no man putting his hand to the plow, but looking back is worthy. Yeah. Elijah is told to go. Elijah has actually almost given up, if you remember earlier in this chapter. Yep. He's asking God to kill him. Yep. He's run away from Jezebel. He's hiding in the cave. He has the, the earthquake, wind and fire, and the still small voice. And, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I, 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 I'm alone. I'm the only yeah. one here. And, uh, yeah. and he's feeling sorry for himself. And then what happens is God says, okay, I've got these things to, for you to do. You've got to go and anoint Ben Hadad, king. Yeah. You've got to go and anoint Jehu to be king over Israel. And then I'm going to give you your successor. Okay, somebody else is going to take on the work after you. And this is what happens. And he sees Elisha and he casts his mantle on him. And Elisha is plowing. But again, you know, what is it? You know, oh, he's put his hand to the plow. And it's like, well, just let me go saying goodbye to goodbye to my family but think about this what are his, what are his family going to say when he gets there are you not going to finish that field you're halfway through ploughing you know you know it's going to leave it half done <laughs> it's like you know go, go, yeah, yeah. finish the field off at least come on you know this is it and it's like you know and then who's going to do this you know who's going to who's going to do it next year well and then now you've ploughed it we need to sell the crops you know at least stay and sell the crops. Rocks. And it's like, and then you know who's going to weed them. And it's like, 
And again, it's like yeah. before long, the whole details of everything gets in there. And so what happens? He he, he takes the plow and burns it. <laughs> he kills the oxen, okay. sacrifices them, and then and boils them, <laughs> and yeah. and they get eaten. So yeah. that's it. Uh, so the thing is, it's a completely clean break. There's no going back. Yeah. This is it. I'm following God. <laughs> this is God's calling on my life, and I'm going to follow God, and mm. there's nothing going to take me back. And it's like, oh, but what about the play? Well, there's nothing to play with now. Oh, what about the oxen? Well, they're gone. They were tasty, but they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know, oh, you know, and it's like, you know, I, I, I'm sure his parents were livid. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> what have you done with my good oxen and my good plow? But it's like, well, no. But the calling of God. Wow. He's gonna, he's gonna be a great prophet, and he's actually gonna be a greater prophet than Elijah. Is he? Yeah, probably. That's a good question. Now, what are we saying here? Jesus is casting his mantle onto us. Wow. Jesus is casting his mantle, his cloak, his robe of righteousness. When we are saved, when we are born again, mm. we, are, we, are, we are cleansed and we are forgiven and we are clothed in a robe of righteousness. Jesus casts his mantle onto us. Wow, you're thinking, wow that's an incredible that's honor. Incredible. That's an incredible uh, blessing here and it's like wow okay and think about it what's what is the situation here Elijah has been a great man of God mm. nobody knows where he came from Elijah the Tishbite it's like he just appears mm. one day and he goes around and does miracles raises the dead heals the sick mm. There's all sorts of amazing miracles that nobody has ever done before, just like Jesus does. Wow. Okay. But the thing is, Elijah is here for a little while longer, and then he's going to be taken up. Taken up to heaven. Now, think about it. Jesus, when he's on the earth, when he's going around making his disciples... What's going to happen? He knows that he's going to go to the cross. He's going to die. He's going to rise again. But then shortly after that, he's also going to be taken up to heaven. Because the work is going to be done. The work is going to be complete. And what's he looking for? He's looking for people who will continue on the work. People who will continue on the work of Christ the calling and that's us that's the disciples yes that was the disciples he was talking to the one who wanted to go back and say goodbye to his family and uh, carry on plowing and it's like no that's not the that's not the purpose anymore and it's like yeah but it's also the disciples who were in the in the in the bible but the disciples who are on the earth today us mm. and he has cast his mantle onto us so we are the inheritors of his purpose jesus is not on the earth today so who is able to show compassion to people who is able to serve people who is able to pray for people who is able to to heal the sick today who is able to to reach the lost today who is able to forgive people today who is able to show mercy who is able to show kindness, who is able to spread the life of Christ today. It is us. Mm. Why? Because we're anointed with God's spirit. The mantle is on us. The calling is on us. It's crazy, really. Because, again, we're nobody. But just like Elisha, he's like, well, it's just, I'm just here plowing the field, getting on with it. Mm. And it's like Elijah said, no, now you're called. And you're mine. And it's like, that's it. Here's the mantle, and it's like, oh, but that, but it's transformation. It's, it's, it's gone, you know. 
No more ploughing. Ploughs gone. Ploughs burnt. Cows are gone. Poor cows. But yeah, no, but then, but then the, here's the really interesting thing. What does Elisha ask for? double portion of God, a double portion of God's spirit. How is that possible? <laughs> and and uh, when El Elijah goes up uh, in the in Second Kings, you know, it's like what's what is the what is it he that he you know ask of me? Like, yes, I want a double portion. And Elijah says, "Well, you've asked a very hard thing." But he said, "Nevertheless, if you see me go up." You know, you you will it will happen. So how does it happen that Elisha gets a double portion of what Elijah had? And it's like, yeah. How could you measure that? How can you measure a double portion of God? Mm. Actually, you, we see it in that he does twice as many miracles. He does similar miracles, not exactly the same, but they're very similar. Mm. But he does twice as many miracles as Elijah does. But it's the same purpose, the same work, the mm. same calling, the same mission statement. Now, wow, okay. Think about this. John chapter 14, we'll close with this. Because it's been a bit of a, a wild... Uh, time already John 14 12 Jesus says verily verily I say unto you when Jesus says this it means it's something important truly truly or sometimes some uh, versions most assuredly I know in uh, in uh, <laughs> In our ministry, sometimes they use it and say, well, this is very important, take note. That's the way, you know, mm. sometimes it gets translated in the vernacular. Listen up, people. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now think about that for a minute. Greater works than these. Can we do greater works than Jesus? It's like, oh, that's blasphemous. How can we do that? It's terrible, you know. It's like, but that's what the Bible tells us. Yeah. You know, he that believes on me... The works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these. Why? Are they greater? Is our life greater than the life of Jesus? Well, you know what? When we're saved, our life is the life of Christ. We have the life of Jesus in us, the life of Christ in us. And, and we are living our life for him on the earth. And the point is, just in the same way, that Elisha does twice as many miracles as Elijah did. Mm. It's not like they were better miracles. Oh, well, well, that that person was was raised from the dead far better than it. <laughs> what, that was twice as good as the way that Elijah did it. No, but the, the start, point is, what happens? It, it, it's yeah. just it's just more miracles. Yeah, more in number. Now, in the same way that Elijah is taken up to heaven and he's gone, but Elisha carries on the work that Elijah was doing, the same spirit, the same miracles. So we on the earth today are the inheritors of Christ's work and his purpose and his calling. He is gone to intercede with it for us mm. at the right hand of God the Father. He has gone to heaven, but his spirit lives on, the calling lives on, the gospel lives on, the power lives on, and it's in our lives. So we do works, 
in Jesus' name. We do works by the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Not to say, well, I'm going to go and, and heal the blind today. I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> cause somebody who's been paralyzed to walk. You know, okay, fine. Well, but if God wants to do that, he could. He could, yeah. And sometimes we fight, we do hear of miracles. Mm-hmm. And we have seen miracles. Yeah. And we have seen people healed. Mm. And we have heard testimonies mm. of people in, in crazy situations where there have been divine reversal. Mm. And situations have been turned around mm-hmm. over the years because of believers through prayer, mm-hmm. through great humility, through nothing of ourselves but relying on the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and actually God is still doing work through us today now you might sort of say yes but I've never walked on water and I've never multiplied loaves into five thousand <laughs> and it's like I, oh, you know I. Uh. but the point is this many smaller acts of miracles you know we pray for someone and they're healed. Mm-hmm. We encourage someone. Mm-hmm. We share the gospel with someone and someone gets saved. Yeah. They have just they're the same quality of miracle. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. smaller ones, but more of them. Because but maybe we've been on the the earth longer than Jesus was. Mm-hmm. Anybody here who is over the age of thirty three? <laughs> I think that might just be everybody yeah. in the room. <laughs> so therefore we are all Actually, we've all been on the earth longer than Jesus was, wow. physically. Yeah, true. Yeah. So in one sense, you think, you know what? The Lord has a purpose in our lives for that. Mm-hmm. And he's using us for that. And he will continue to use us for that. And it's like, yeah, in the same way that, you know, the Elijah casts the mantle onto Elisha. And that's it. The plowing's over. Gone. Jesus is the, is doing the same with us. It's like mm-hmm. no man putting his hand to the, the plow, but looking back, it's like oh, but you know, oh, but uh, I don't know, uh, there's something good on the telly tonight. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, just let me go on my holiday to Marbella first. <laughs> and it's like no, it's like forget it. We can get so caught up with things in this world it's so easy for us to get caught up with this world. <coughs> it's so easy for us to get caught up with our life and our job and our, mm-hmm. you know our families and it's like that and there's nothing wrong in these things these things are not wrong in their own right but when god has called us to something greater mm-hmm. when the lord jesus christ says hey you are the inheritor mm-hmm. you are the inheritor of my mantle my calling my purpose i'm going to do miracles through you I'm going to do, you're going to do greater works than these. Is it possible for us to do greater works than, than Jesus? No, it's not than. It's actually through Jesus. It's him working through us. He is still going to do the great works. It's the same spirit. It's the same, it's the same God. It's the same purpose. But we are just available because we are the ones that are on the earth at the moment Mm. until his return. Praise God. Mm. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for tonight, for uh, just a few thoughts to encourage us tonight and and remind us that it's, yes, this is not the cost of discipleship, but this is the blessing, the honour the challenge, the excitement of discipleship. Thank you, Lord, that actually when you call us to be your purpose, you do something incredible. And we are the inheritors of your calling. We have the Spirit of God in us. We have the life of Christ in us. We are forgiven. We are healed. We are restored. And we have the ability to let you work through us and do great works on the earth. Thank you, Lord, that you are able to use us. And Lord, keep us humble, keep us available, keep us open to being used by you, Lord. 
we have nothing better to do. <laughs> there is nothing better on the earth to do than to be used for the cause of Christ. Guide us tonight, fill us and use us, we pray. Encourage us, we ask now. And Lord, we pray, if there's anyone out there who has never trusted Christ as their saviour, anyone watching tonight who wants to be that inheritor of the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ, who wants to have the life of Christ in them, the Spirit of God, Lord, we pray that this would be a time when they just say, Lord, I need to be forgiven. I need healing. I need I need to be changed, Lord. In myself, I'm a mess. But in, in Christ, I can have purpose. I can have hope. Thank you, Lord, that you went to the cross for me. You paid that price for me. You removed every barrier of sin for me. And you've given me a calling. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your life. And show me your heart, Lord. I want to learn of you. Come into my life now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And if you prayed that for the prayer for the first time tonight, please let someone know, get in touch, or, or let someone know who you think is a believer as well, uh, who will encourage you in that. Uh, take care. God bless. We will see you again soon. Join us whenever you can. Bye-bye.